And, and speaking of listening, there's a dear lady you listen to every morning. You've gotten in the habit of listening to her. And pretty soon, you're going to be watching her nightly on the Fox News channel as she has a brand new show. She wanted to be here tonight to celebrate this campaign kickoff and to remind you, if you're still trying to catch your breath, if you're still trying to understand why it is there was such a tremendously wonderful upset on election night in 2016, she has written a new book entitled Billionaire at the Barricades, Ladies and gentlemen, Laura Ingram! Nice to see you. Thank you, JD. Hey, everybody, how are you? How's it going? Uh, well, Senator McCain and Senator Flake send their regards and. No, they do, they do. They're, um, they're, they were busy. They were going to stop by, but they couldn't make it tonight. Uh, they're busy representing Democratic interests in the state. Uh, it is such a great privilege uh, to be here. I always write remarks and I never look at them. So I'm just going to give these remarks to, I don't even know who you are, but I'll give the remarks to you. Uh, it is such a great privilege to be here. And, and I'm so humbled that all of you came out to see a great candidate who is going to be your next senator, Miss Kelly Ward. And I want to thank everybody here who listens to uh, our show on KFNX every morning here in Phoenix, which is our great affiliate. We'll be broadcasting tomorrow morning from Las Vegas, not from here, but uh, we're so grateful uh, that all of you turned out. This is a pivotal time for the country, and I know it, it kind of seems like people always say that. Oh, it's right at a crossroads, it's a pivotal time. But think about what's happened in the last 11 months. In the last 11 months, we have seen the old guard of, frankly, both parties challenged in a way that they haven't been challenged in about mm, 40 years. Since 1976, when Ronald Reagan almost won the Republican convention, uh, that was the last time, and then of course he wins the nomination in 1980, and politics was never the same again. I worked for President Reagan as a young speechwriter in domestic policy. I am here for one reason, uh, because of one reason, that was because of him. If it weren't for Ronald Reagan, the Lord knows what would have happened to our country, and Lord knows the entire conservative media establishment would not have existed. Uh, I am here not as uh, someone who thinks I have all the answers. I don't. But I do know who doesn't have the answers. And since we are in the South, I can say, bless his heart. But it's time to melt the snowflake. <laughs> Jeff Flake, Jeff Flake could not even write a book with an original title. Here's a, here's a clue. If you're gonna run as a <clears throat> Republican in a state as amazing as Arizona, it's probably a good idea not to title your book the title of a seminal conservative book. Of course, uh, The Conscience of a Conservative. You can't do that because people actually <clears throat> have they roughly read Goldwater. They know what he stood for and they understand the movement that he started really in 1964. So if you can't come up with an original book title, it's probably a good bet that you're not really clued in to the needs and the hopes and the dreams of the citizens of the great state of Arizona. It is said that you're judged by the company that you keep. And that is a, that's a pretty 
That's, that's pretty accurate, don't you think? I mean, we all are. We all are judged by the company we keep. And you're all pretty cool, so I think I'm judged pretty well right now. So I'm glad you're all here. But I also think, to some extent, uh, you can judge a person by the enemies they make. And I'm thinking about the enemies um, of Donald Trump, or maybe the adversaries, to put it more uh, diplomatically. Uh, think about those enemies right now, adversaries. Antifa, which is a fascist group that pretends to, to be something else. The Democrat media complex. Some of, some of them are here tonight. You're very... No, there's some good reporters out there and they're doing, they're doing their very best and I know they're gonna be fair in covering this, uh, this event. Um, it's okay, they're good guys and gals. They're doing their best. I mean, these are jobs that Americans will do. I'm sorry, I had to, I had to work it in. But think about it, it's, it, it's to some extent the press, not everybody, but some in the press, they don't much like Donald Trump. They think he's not very smart. They think he's kind of a vulgarian. They think he uh, doesn't really know anything about politics. They think that he is way, way radical on all these ideas. Antifa, the Democrat establishment, the GOP establishment, uh, the Hollywood entertainment complex. And so I think if all of those groups are kind of against us, we're doing a pretty good job. I think that's pretty good. Jeff Flake was for the Gang of Eight amnesty bill that I want to I want to uh, pat talk radio on the back and uh, other friends in the conservative media that we helped stop in 2000 and whatever it was, uh, 2012 or 13. Um, he believes that things like the Trans-Pacific Partnership or the World Trade Organization, or NAFTA, are somehow going to turn around as really good for the United States. Jeff Flake stands on almost every issue diametrically opposed to President Trump. He voted for a guy who he knew couldn't get elected president because he despised the Trump agenda so much. Now think about that. Jeff Flake was willing to lose the Supreme Court for a generation or more to stop Donald Trump. The Supreme Court of the United States, which has decided some of the most important issues facing our country today, from how we detain people, the definition of marriage, uh, we'll see how, what they do on this travel ban ultimately, if that ends up making its way back to the court. On issue after issue, the court has taken power away from the people and decided issues as a kind of super legislature operating over the people. Jeff Flake was willing to trade that all away to defeat Donald Trump. That, that is in and of itself a disqualifier from office if you're a Republican. So, so I have an idea, I have an idea for Jeff Flake. I have an idea for Jeff Flake. Jeff Flake. Leave, leave the Republican Party and strike your true alliance with a more globalist Democrat party. That's fine. Or, or do us all a favor, retire early, and join the other retreads on Dancing with the Stars. I think that would be perfect. He kind of cuts a very slim, dashing figure. I think it'd be actually great on Dancing with the Stars. So on issues of immigration, trade, military interventionism, the court, Jeff Flake stands diametrically opposed to what all of you believe. Certainly what, all of, all, what I believe and I know what President Trump believes. So at this point, we are very fortunate to have a woman who is a courageous, female, conservative, entrepreneur, physician, military wife, who knows what it's like to have a loved one deployed and knows that when you send troops into battle, 
You better do more than nation building. You better know what the mission is, how it can be accomplished, and at the end of it, it better make America stronger, safer, and more secure. Kelly Ward understands that. Now, Mitch McConnell yesterday said, uh, I don't even have to crack jokes on the stage. I can just say names. Oh my goodness. Uh, Mitch, Mitch McConnell uh, said yesterday that people who uh, want to run candidates against establishment figures, they just haven't been all that successful. They have all these candidates that weren't successful. They weren't very good candidates. And to, to actually be a successful politician, you have to win. Well, he's right about that. I mean, you do want to have good people. You want to have people who know how to deal with the press, walk through the fire, as uh, Donald Trump showed he knew how to do. Uh, get the fact that uh, attacks are going to be coming in. There's going to be a lot of incoming. Know how to deal with it. He's right about that. And the Republicans have you know, picked some uh, doozies as primary challengers against establishment candidates. So the old dog uh, uh, establishment guy from Kentucky, he's pretty wily. He's a pretty smart guy. However, I have two words for that, uh, four words for that. Eric, Cantor, Luther, Strange. And a lot of those unsuccessful challengers uh, were candidates before DJT, before Trump. Now we have a new game in town. The great value of Donald Trump, and there's a lot to value, but one of the great values that I think is not appreciated maybe by some members uh, of the press corps, and maybe some uh, members of the Republican Party, is he kind of smokes everybody out, right? We kind of now know where everybody stands, and that's okay. I th I don't you, wouldn't you rather know where everyone stands on issues? Instead of, instead of having people say, oh, well, we're all for immigration. And of course we're all for immigration enforcement, but we just want to you know, regularize all the folks who are here. Of course we're for building a new structure at the border. Of course we want trade that works for the American people. Of course, of course, of course. Well, we know when push comes to shove, they say they want to do one thing, they campaign one way, whether you're John McCain, or whether you're any other these, other these Republicans who said they would repeal and replace Obamacare, and when push came to shove, Mitch McConnell, for all of his experience, and he's the most experienced person up there in the Senate, he could not put the points on the board. Donald Trump, with the help of Kelly Ward, will be able to have those legislative victories that are key for advancing the America First agenda. Last night, uh, Senator McCain said that economic nationalism, economic nationalism is essentially a scourge. It's a, uh, it's just, you know, fly-by-night, uh, pipe dream philosophy. You know, you know what I think is a pipe dream philosophy? Is the idea that you're going to arm a bunch of Syrian rebels and you're going you're gonna to take a chance with our soldiers and our special forces on the ground with people you don't know, we don't know, and we can't trust. That's what John McCain thinks is, is, is a realistic vision. So I would take, I'll, I'll take the common sense and the more prudent style foreign policy, frankly, of Donald Trump and then supported by Kelly Ward, then I will take a nation-building philosophy that is untethered to American history and contrary to the principles of the American founding. It's a simple question. Do you trust the people or do you trust far-flung bureaucracies? Do you trust individual citizens to run their own lives and make decisions from education to how to spend you know, the money in their purse, do you trust them or do you trust Washington? The idea of populism of the sort that I cut my teeth on, the, the strains of populism that echoed in Ronald Reagan's speeches, that ultimately amounts to one idea, returning power to the people.
Jeff Flake doesn't trust you, and I think, probably in his gut, he doesn't like you. Kelly Ward will represent Arizona proudly. I'll keep her in check when she's in the Senate. No free ride on my show. I'll be watching her very closely. I know she's not going to disappoint because, because too many people like you have spent a lot of time volunteering your hard-earned money and your enthusiasm to back her. Let's push her over the finish line. Let's get it done for Kelly. Let's get it done for Arizona, but for the nation. This is a pivotal time for our country. We need to do this. We need to do this now. I now want to introduce a friend of mine of many years who uh, I just like to call him the man in black. He riles up all the right people. He's a student of history. He's a military veteran. He's a warrior for populism and economic nationalism. And the Buchanan, Reagan, Trump style, my friend, the head of one of the most successful media outlets in the United States, Breitbart, and of course, former uh, top aide to President Trump, who is one of the pivotal figures in this victory in November, my friend, Steve Bannon. Thank you, thank you. By the way, I was, I was just in the neighborhood out here seeing advocacy groups, and, uh, and Laura was so kind to, to invite me to Kelly Ward's kickoff event. But I promised, she, she gave me so much grief at Value Voters, I did a shave for you. Look, Laura's book sums it up. It talks about this populist movement, this populist revolt that's been going on since President Reagan. And this is, a, this is an incredibly powerful movement. This movement's made up of folks like yourselves. It's working class and middle class people that are telling the permanent political class in Washington, D.C., this globalist set of elites that want to rule over you from an imperial city like a new aristocracy. They could care less about your economic well-being. They could care less about your families. They could care less about your children and your grandchildren. Here's the reason. Seven of the nine richest counties in this country surround Washington, D.C. Since the first time since the silicon chip was invented, the per capita income in those seven counties is greater than Silicon Valley. They have a business model that works for them. This is the consultant, lobbyist, donor, corporatist, and politician class. And the only way that we're going to tear this down is with people like our great president, Donald J. Trump. <laughs> Laura Ingram shows you in her book, and you've got to get the book, the roots of this populist revolt. But it was the bravery and courage of Donald Trump that took it to the next level. <laughs> president Trump, a billionaire with a great family, a loving wife, terrific children, and friends that you can't believe. Owned some of the greatest properties in the world, the greatest golf courses. He gave it all up. You know why he gave it up? Because he felt he had a duty to you, the people and citizens of the United States of America. If you saw how they attacked him every day, how they try to rip him apart every day, how they try to destroy him every day, and yes, I'm talking about Mitch McConnell in the United States Senate of Republicans. Have we ever had a commander in chief with people on the Armed Services Committee and people on the Foreign Relations Committee that say the types of things they say about Donald Trump? Is that acceptable to you, the people of Arizona? Do you think something has to be done about that? So tell me what you want to do. It's an open revolt, and it should be. These people hold you in total contempt. 
When they attack a Donald Trump and a Dr. Kelly Ward, it's not Donald Trump and Kelly Ward they're trying to shut up. It's you they're trying to shut up. They're afraid of you. They're afraid of you. You know why? This audience right here, you're an existential threat to their business model. They hold you in total and complete contempt. They think that you're a group of morons. They think you don't have any idea how to comport yourself, live your life, or guide this country. But if you gave me the choice between being governed by the first hundred people that showed up tonight for this rally or the top hundred partners at Goldman Sachs, I would take the first hundred people here. You know, Mitch McConnell, the last couple of days, this revolt is going from Alabama to Arizona. The last couple of days, Mitch has been saying this big thing, hey, you got to win. You know, uh, winners make policy, losers go home. Hey, Mitch, note to self, Mitch, Big Luther Strange and little Bobby Corker are both going home. These people, Mitch, it's two to zero. Oh. The people of Alabama and the people of Tennessee have already spoken. Your folks are going home. Their folks are going to make policy. And guess what, Mitch? It's going to be the policy of the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump, not what you want to do. Their contempt for President Trump, their disrespect for President Trump, their backbiting, their backstabbing, their bickering, they have sown the whirlwind. They've sown the wind. And they're going to reap the whirlwind. That whirlwind is Kelly Ward. <laughs> Kelly Ward believes in securing our southern border and building a wall. <laughs> Kelly, Ward believes, Kelly Ward believes in negotiating tough trade deals that represent you, the American people. And Dr. Kelly Ward knows how to repeal and replace Obamacare. And Kelly Ward knows that Arizona could be the next Silicon Valley, and she's focused on bringing back high manufacturing, manufacturing jobs. Not service jobs, manufacturing jobs. There's going to be a long, tough struggle ahead, okay? This is going to be all the way to November of 2018. I would love to tell you people we can wave a wand and it's all going to be good. It's not. Every day is going to be a struggle. You're going to have good days, you're going to have bad days. But when the people like Dr. Kelly Ward out there, they're prepared to sacrifice everything. And the people of Arizona, the people in this room, if you get out there, if you're the grassroots, and I've talked to it, we're building a grassroots army. It's going to be their money versus your muscle. If you have Kelly Ward's back, trust me. We're going to turn this country around. We're going to put America first. And in doing that, you're going to help Donald Trump make America great again. Dr. Kelly Ward. for coming. It's amazing to see all of your smiling faces out there. Uh, many that I know, some that I don't. You all probably know that I am a military wife. I am, thank you. I want to thank my husband, Mike. I couldn't do this without him. I'm also a mom of three awesome kids, Katie, Cameron, and Nick. And Katie, put this whole event together. She is amazing. 
I couldn't be a prouder mom, I can tell you. I could not be a prouder mom. I, I'm, a, I'm a family doctor, I'm a former Arizona State Senator, and I look forward to being your next United States Senator. Now, many people ask me to describe myself, my political self, and I will tell you that I am a liberty-loving, constitutional conservative who is ready to go to Washington, D.C. and drain the swamp. So, you know, as, as a military wife, I have seen our government let down our military members and our veterans again and again and again. This has got to stop. We have to stop using our veterans as a political football. Now, as a doctor, you know, a lot of people say, well, as a doctor, why are you getting into this dirty world of politics? Well, somebody has to do it. And I will tell you that as a family physician, I am a problem solver. I'm used to taking very complicated problems, breaking them down into very manageable pieces so that we can get good outcomes. Does that sound like something you want to see in Washington? And let me just touch a tiny bit on Obamacare. Okay, Obamacare is the reason why I ran for office the first time because it is an assault on health care liberty and on health care freedom for all of us. It's an assault on my profession as a physician, but for each and every one of us as a patient. And so we need to work relentlessly to pull Obamacare out by the roots. I love what President Trump started, and I look forward to getting to Washington, D.C. and finishing it with Obamacare. Now, like most of you in this room, I know there are some people that are here not from Arizona, but most of us are Arizonans, and we have seen the effect of illegal immigration and our wide open border on every aspect of society from public safety to corrections to health care to education to our very American culture, and it has got to stop. Who wants to build the wall? right. We have got to build that wall. And that does not just mean the physical barrier. It does include a physical barrier, but it also includes utilizing technology to the fullest. It includes empowering our border patrol and making sure that they have the money and the manpower to do their job. And the last piece of that puzzle is the accountability piece. And sometimes we as Republicans shy away from that a bit, but we can't because employers who hire people illegally have got to expect consequences. As well as the people who decide to come to our country, who make that choice to come to our country the wrong way, or to break their contract with our country because they overstay their visas, they have to expect consequences rather than rewards. If we do those four things, build the wall, use technology, empower Border Patrol, and expect accountability, we will go a long way to making sure we stop illegal immigration. Now, it is National Tax Day, right, or, uh, you know, Tax Reform Day, according to the President, and so I'm happy with what he's proposing. I like to see us shrinking the tax code, shrinking the brackets, 
from seven to three. I love that they want to, that he's proposing decreasing the corporate tax rate. Yes, on a postcard, you're right, Kathy, on a, on a postcard filing your income tax return. Uh, and what we as, as conservatives, as Republicans, need to let our liberal friends and neighbors know is that this tax cut, corporate-wise, is not just for rich, you know, fat cat crony cronies. It is actually something that is going to benefit every single American across the board. Because number one, companies are going to be able to grow and create great jobs for American citizens. They are going to be able to increase wages for the American worker. And, and all of us in this room and everybody across the state and the country will benefit from lower consumer prices. So let's do it. Yes, beat, beat Kristen. Who, who, yeah, beat Kristen, right? We've got to beat Kristen. We, we um, and I'm, I'm poised to do it. Can't wait. Uh, we are working very hard, and I, I do want to take a minute to say thank you to the grand hosts, thank you to the hosts, thank you to the VIPs, and thank you to all of you who came today to hear Laura and Steve and me, and who want to make America great again. So just know this, this is not going to be an easy task. Obviously taking on the establishment on the left and the right is not easy, it's not cheap, it's not um, always fun. It is kind of fun though, I have to admit. But if we want a different outcome from Washington DC, we have got to send different people there. I can't wait to finish reading Laura's book, Billionaire, Billionaire at the Barricades, because Steve Bannon tells me that that is my campaign plan. So I am going to be reading it very closely. I hope you all have gotten your copies and will go to the book signing um, after this so that uh, we can help facilitate getting great, great conservative messages out there. I thank all of you for being here. Uh, thank you for being a part of Team Ward. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you. We will put America first. America first. Thank you. Thank you.